so today we're just going to finish the notes that we started last time. So let me kind of take you down memory lane to tell you guys what we talked about. So the first thing that we talked about were polynomial functions. So polynomial functions are written in this form and they have a coefficient, they have um, variables, they have no negative exponents and they have a leading coefficient. That leading coefficient is always at the front of your equation. We talked about degree. We talked about how you can find a degree. We also talked about the parent functions and we talked about your end behaviors and linear factors. End behaviors is pretty much memorizing this chart and thinking back to the parent function graphs. If you have a certain function with an even or odd degree or a negative or positive leading coefficient, what's going to happen to the far ends of your graph? That also helps you with your linear factors. Your linear factors are the same thing as your x-intercepts. So we use the linear factors in combination with your multiplicity to actually graph your function. So today we're going to focus on graphing and writing the equations of your polynomial functions. And I'm going to start out by helping you guys label the general equation for this guy. Okay, so for this graph, um, it asks you, or I'm going to ask you to write out the equation that represents this function. Okay, so first thing that you need in order to actually write out the equation is the x-intercepts. We already have those. This would be a general equation for a polynomial function. The issue is I don't know how to get from here to this or how we got from this to this uh, general equation. Here's the first thing you should do. Each of the items in parentheses, what are they? What are each of the items in your parentheses? What are they? These items are just your linear factors. These are, those are the same thing as your x-intercepts. So all of these x-intercepts, I need to make into linear factors. I need to write them in their binomial form. So Tristan, if I wanted to make this a binomial, you would need to make each of the um, equations pretty much equal zero. If you think back to what we did last class, x equals negative seven, we made it equal zero and we had a binomial. This binomial is pretty much the same binomial we saw in our equation. So how would I make negative four equal to zero instead? What would I need to do? Okay, we're gonna add four to each side. This is gonna give me, I'm gonna write it underneath, x plus four equals zero. See how it's equal to zero? This is gonna be part of our equation. So I'm gonna rewrite next to this, x plus four. Really quick, Tristan, what's the multiplicity on x plus four? One, so you can just put a one next to it. There's a reason why I left that space in the front, so make sure you have some space. Next one, Tristan, what am I gonna to have to do? If I want it to equal zero, add one to both sides. So we're going to make this X plus one equals zero. Okay, cool. X plus one equals zero. And my multiplicity for this again is a one. What about for two? How would I make the equation equal to zero? All right. So X minus two is going to equal zero. That's for this one. So I'm going to write over here X minus two. Double check the multiplicity, Tristan. What is it? Two. Guys, do the same thing for the last two. Make these equal to zero, and then write out the binomials towards the end of your equation. So write out both of them. Maria, when you get this one into binomial form, what did you have to do to the four? Okay, so what's the binomial? All right, we're going to make that x minus 4 equals 0. And what's the multiplicity on that? 1. Okay. And then the last one, x equals 8. What was the binomial? x minus 8 equals 0. And then if I write this out, x minus 8, that is an 8. What's the exponent? Or the multiplicity, excuse me? 3. So this equation, even though it's kind of going into the graph, this is what I should get for my general equation for this. There's one thing that's a little different. I don't know if you can tell from the other equations, but for each of these, they need to have some leading coefficient. And we talked about that on the very first page. Every polynomial function has to have a leading coefficient. It will not always be a positive one. So what you're going to have to do, which we're going to learn how to solve today, is leave a general variable in front of this, like A, and we're going to have to find it eventually, which we're going to actually do on the next page. So to make sure you guys understand this, make sure that you do a couple of things. Find the zeros in their multiplicity, which are the x-intercepts, write it in binomial form, and then stick that A right in front. Yes. Just to refresh your memory, how we found these multiplicities last class, we looked at our graph. Remember how this one is crossing through? What type of function does this look like? Say it again. 
linear. So that's why we put multiplicity of 1 because the exponent on the linear function is 1. What about the 2? How did we get the 2? What does it look like? A quadratic because it bounces off. It has that parabola shape. So that's how we got those multiplicities. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do on the next page. So if I go to the next page, we're going to talk about these two at the top. Before we talk about those two, I'm going to give you guys some steps. And I kind of gave you the first two steps on the last page, but I'm going to give you a couple more. So here's your first step, and I literally am rewriting this from the last page, from what we did. First thing you're going to do is find your zeros, which are the same thing as what? Your x-intercepts and your multiplicity. I hope I spelled that right. That says multiplicity. M -U -L -T -I. I think there's another I there. There we go. And then step two, we're going to write it, write your x-intercept in binomial form. So write your x-intercept in binomial form. So those are the first two steps that we just did on the last page. I'm going to do the question over here to the left. You guys are going to do this question underneath the steps. So let me move this over, and we're going to do this question over here to the left. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label the x-intercepts. So there are three x-intercepts here. The first one is negative 3. There's a reason why I'm leaving a space, guys. x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. Mia, what's the mul or the uh, yeah, what's the multiplicity for x equals negative three? Look at the graph. One. one. So I'm just gonna put m for multiplicity because I'm getting lazy. M is your multiplicity. That's one. What about x equals negative one? Why'd you get three? What kind of function does that look like? Uh huh. Looks like a cubic function. Cubic functions have that curve. And then what about for positive two? Two. Perfect. Those are my multiplicities. Okay. From here. In order to find our zeros and multiplicity, once we have that for step one, we're going to write each of these x-intercepts as a binomial. So for this first one, we're going to add three. So x plus three is going to equal zero, because remember, we want all of these to equal zero. I'm going to add one to each side, and it's okay if you go over the graph, it's okay. x plus one equals zero. And then the last one, we're going to subtract two on each side. So x minus two will equal zero. And yeah, how did I start out by writing the equation on the last page? What did I do? Okay, we put in all of the, not just the x-intercepts, but their binomials that we created. So what do we usually put behind the y equals? An a. Okay, so I don't know what that a value is, which is your leading coefficient. But what are the binomials that I know? Look at the page we have. What's the first one? Go ahead. To what power? What's the multiplicity? One, okay, so I can put a one. Next one. Okay, so no, hold on, we have x plus one, and we're gonna have that to the third power. And what's the last binomial I found? It's over here. And what's that raised to? Two, those are my binomials. Okay, unlike the last question, this graph clearly gives me a lot of nice looking points. So the next step that I'm gonna add you, or add to your list over here is to find your a value because on tests and quizzes you can't always get away with just putting a generic a you guys tell me you were made it through algebra one how would you find the leading coefficient from this yes find a point test point and plug it in so looking at this graph emma what's a good test point to probably use what's the only good point i could probably for sure say that it crosses at 0, 10, I'm going to write that out, 0, 10, that is your y-intercept. If you can, and I'm going to add this to your notes, find your a value using the y-intercept, if possible. If you have your y-intercept labeled, make sure that you plug that in. Do not use, or not using, actually just put not, not the x-intercepts. So you can't use the x-intercepts, guys, because your equation is literally made of x-intercepts. So instead of using the x-intercept, use the y-intercept. So this point that Emma just gave me, 0, 10, I'm going to use this, and I'm going to find your a value. Emma, you said to use it. What do you mean, use it? What am I going to do with it? 
plug, sorry, go ahead, plug the 10 in the y, plug the 0 into x, and then do what? And then you solve. So y is equal to 10, a, 0 plus 3 to the first power, 0 plus 1 to the third power, 0 minus 2 squared. She said to solve, so let's solve it. Guys, when you're solving here, don't distribute. You are using PEMDAS to simplify. You are just using order of operations. So we're going to make this 10 equals a, 3 to the first power, 1 to the third power, and negative 2 uh, squared, not cubed. Elias, what's 3 to the first power? 3? What's 1 to the third power? Please don't tell me 3. 1? And then what's negative 2 squared? Negative 2 squared. What's negative 2 times negative 2? 4. What kind of 4? Positive. All right, multiply. What's 3 times 1 times 4, Elias? 12. So I'm going to make that 12a. Guys, you could put the 12 next to the a in front or behind it. It's going to give you the same thing. Elias, how would I isolate a? What do I have to do to each side? All right, you're my calculator. What's 10 divided by 12? Reduce it. 5 over 6. That's your A value. So, Elias, one last question. What am I going to do with that? Plug it in for what? For A, but in where? The A that you have right up here, the general equation right up at the top, that's what you're going to plug it in for. So up here at the top, my last step, step four, is what Elias just told me. We are going to substitute the A value that you just found for A in the original equation. So in your original equation. What's up? So you have this written down. Um, Tristan just asked a good question. If you don't have a y-intercept that's nice and that you can use, what do you use instead? If that happens on a test or quiz, you'll use like a substitute point instead, and it'll be clearly labeled. So for instance, on this graph, 130 looks like a good point, but I wouldn't recommend using it unless I explicitly tell you 1 in 30 is on that graph. So if it's like on an actual nice pretty grid coordinate plane, you'll be easily able to see it. Last thing I'm going to do down here is rewrite it. We're going to have y equals 5 over 6. I'm going to recopy all of this. So we're going to have x plus 3. I do not need to keep rewriting the first power, but you can if you want. We're going to have x plus 1 cubed and x minus 2 squared. This would be your answer. There's one thing that you can technically do that can kind of help you check your answer. Um, if you look at the graph that you have on top, what are the ends of your graph doing, Alex? What are the ends of your graph doing? What direction are they going? Up. Both of these graphs are going up. Remember that table that I told you guys to memorize on the third page? Yeah, this is kind of where it's helpful. When you, both of your ends of your graph are up, that means you should have a positive leading coefficient. Alex, look at your leading coefficient. Is it positive? Okay, perfect. That matches. And your degree should be even. Okay, well, Alex, if you look at your degree, what's the degree for this polynomial? Say it again. What's your degree? Not quite. Help them out, guys. What's your degree here? How'd you get six? What'd you add? The exponents. One plus three plus two. That's your degree. One plus three plus two is going to give you six. So it matches both of the items that we just said. Since both of the ends are going up, your leading coefficient should be positive, and the sum of all of your multiplicities, which are your degree or your exponents, should be an even number. So six is even. Give me a nod or shake. Does this make sense with what you just did? Good. Show me that by doing question two right next to it. I'm going to give you about four minutes. Okay, so you have how many x-intercepts here? You have three. One two, actually two, and then three. You have three x-intercepts. So for this first one, you have x equals negative one. If you look at the multiplicity, guys, keep in, keep in mind, you're looking at negative one, what's happening to the graph? So Enya, what's happening at the graph at negative one? What is the graph doing? Is it crossing through the x-axis or is it touching it? It's touching it. If you think back to literally what your homework was over last class, whoops, other page, when you're um, touching the x-axis or you're bouncing it off of the x-axis, that gives you a multiplicity of 2. So down here, I'm going to make the note, your multiplicity here is 2. 
for x equals 2, which is your other x-intercept, this graph is kind of curving through. It's not quite um, a line, but it's kind of curving. If you look back at the notes that I gave you, when it curves through like a cubic function, that's a multiplicity of 3. So down here, multiplicity is 3. And then the last one, x equals 4, this literally just crosses through just like a regular line. So when it crosses through just like a regular line, you're going to put 1. Is that okay? All right, Emma, what was your equation without your a value? So we haven't found the a value yet. What were the binomials you got? Do you need to put that one as an exponent? No, you don't have to. If you want to put the one there, guys, you can, but on multiple choice tests and quizzes, I won't do that. All right, Emma, you go to, you already found the a value. Go ahead and tell me what's the a value. Negative one over eight. So we're going to rewrite this as x plus one squared, x minus two cubed, and x minus four to the first power. Really quick, I just want to check to make sure, does this equation match up with the graph that I have here, specifically your end behavior? So Michelle, on this graph, when both of your ends are going down, what does that mean about your leading coefficient? It's negative. So is your leading coefficient negative? Okay, perfect. That checks off. What about the degree? If your both ends of your graph are going down, what does that mean for your degree? What uh, sign does it have to be? Or excuse me, what's, is it even or odd? Even. So if I add the exponents here, this is 2 plus 3, which is 5. 1, which I sometimes write out, will give it 6, which is even. You do not need to write it as part of your answer. I don't know if your homework will count it as right or wrong. I would probably just put it without the 1 because it will definitely count it right if that's the case. All right, questions, concerns? All right, if you're good, let's move to the second page or the next page behind it. On this page, I'm going to do two questions, which are numbers three and four. So let's look at questions three and four. Okay, for question three, this one is asking you to pretty much write the equation. So let me kind of read the directions from the last page. It says, uh, for the questions below, you're going to form a polynomial whose real zeros are, and degree are given, and then write the function in standard form. Okay, so for this one, it tells you you have a couple of x-intercepts. It says negative zero, guys. That's a typo. It's just zero, so ignore that plus sign. It's just zero. So we have uh, zeros that are zero. We have two over five, and we have x equals negative one. You see how behind x equals negative 1, it says that it has a multiplicity of 2? That means just at negative 1, you have a multiplicity of 2. Just at negative 1. Okay, well, the other two x-intercepts have to have some kind of multiplicity. I'll give you a pro tip. If you do not see me give you a multiplicity explicitly, like I told you here, you can safely assume that the multiplicity for 0 and the multiplicity for 2 over 5 will both be 0. Or excuse me, both be 1 because you can't have a multiplicity of zero. So both of those multiplicities are one. If that's true, what do you think your degree will be? It should be. What's two plus one plus one? Four. That would be your degree. So let's go ahead and find our equation. We just did this on the last page, but I wanted you to see when you have x equals zero, what you're supposed to do. If you think back to the last page, each of the binomials that we got, let me kind of go back here, each of the binomials we got were all equal to zero. So if I can get all of these to equal zero, then I have my answers. So one of my binomials, quote unquote, is going to be x equals zero because it's just x by itself. For the next one, two over five. I know you're saying, oh, Miss Tapia, you could just subtract it. No. I know one of the questions in your kind of end of your packet looks like a fraction. I don't like having that very often. On your tests and quizzes, I want you to actually write it out as a normal looking binomial. We did that on questions like this page. So you see here how we have negative one half? How did we get that? What did we do? So if you think back, when we had two X plus one when we solved it, that's how we got that fraction. So I want you guys to give me the exact same binomial like I see here. In order to do that, um, Elizabeth, how would I make this into the binomial I just showed you? What would I have to do? Make it equal to zero. So how would I do that though? I don't want the I don't want it to be x minus two fifths. How would I make it into a normal looking binomial? You see how this five is being divided? What's the opposite of dividing? Multiply. 
So let's start by multiplying both sides by 5. So 5 times x is going to give me 5x, and 2 over 5 times 5 is just 2. This is almost equal to 0. What's the only other thing I have to move? How? Subtract 2 on each side. So 5x minus 2 is going to equal 0. This is how you're going to write it. On tests and quizzes, guys, if you give me just the x minus 2 fifths, I'm not going to give you full credit. I want to see your binomial look just like this. And then for the last one, we have x equals negative 1. I'm going to add 1 to each side. So x plus 1 will equal 0. All right, I have my binomials. Let's write out our equation. So to write out the equation for this, we're going to have y equals a. Okay, let me see. The first, quote, binomial that I have is x equals 0, so I'm just going to put x. The multiplicity for that is just a 1. For the next, quote, binomial, because this one's actually 1, is going to be 5x minus 2, and your multiplicity was listed here. That's at 1. And then the last one, you have x plus 1, and your multiplicity here is 2. This would be your equation. If you wanted to write this a little nicer, you could rewrite it as y equals ax without the parentheses, and then 5x minus 2, x plus 1 squared. If your test is multiple choice, guys, I'm telling you, I'm going to write your answer like this. If it's free response and I allow you to write out the um, answer, you can give me this and I'll accept it. So multiple choice will look like what I boxed. One last thing, guys. Emma just asked a good question. Um, she said in this question, are we finding the A? We don't have a graph here, guys, and I don't have a specific point given. So unfortunately, I can't find the A value. If I was to give you a point to find your A value, yes, you would have to find it. Okay. Last thing I'm going to look at before we move over and actually start graphing is question four. What do those eyes mean? Imaginary. Okay, so there's a theorem that I need you guys to use, which will help you with this. So the theorem that you guys need, and honestly, on tests and quizzes, guys, I'm not going to ask you to recite this theorem. The theorem that you're going to need is called the complex conjugate theorem. We're kind of taking a trip down memory lane to kind of like when you were in geometry. I don't need you to memorize this theorem yet again. I just need you to understand why I'm doing what I'm about to do. So here's why I'm doing what I'm about to do. By the complex conjugate theorem, yes, we're going to write, if a root, that says root, if a root of a polynomial is a complex number, such as a plus b i. Remember, when we talked about complex numbers, a is the real part, b i is the imaginary part. So if you have a root, that word says root, of a polynomial is complex or is a complex number, like a plus b i, then the, then the complex conjugate which is a minus bi, literally just the opposite sign, same two numbers though, is also a root. So if you have a root of a polynomial that's a complex number, so a plus bi, that also means then the complex conjugate, so pretty much the same numbers, opposite sign, will also be a root. The reason why I say that is because you have two x-intercepts on the left-hand side. You have two of them. So one of the x-intercepts you have, I'm going to move this over. One of the x-intercepts you have is x equals, come on, pin, x equals i. And the other x-intercept you have is x equals negative 2i. What did it say your degree is again, Chisara? Read the problem. What does it say your degree is? 4. Okay, well, this so far, remember, based on what I told you, the multiplicity here is 1. The multiplicity here is one. You have two more that are missing. So with those two more, I need to figure out what the conjugate is. Okay, so right now you have a positive i. What's the opposite of positive? Negative. So the other x-intercept that's missing is negative i. That also has a multiplicity of one. What about the negative 2i? What's the uh, conjugate for that one? Positive 2i. Double check my numbers. We have multiplicity of one plus one plus one plus one. What's 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1? 4. That's your degree. That's how I know I've done it correct. So 
Give me an otter shake. Does this make sense with what I just did? I didn't just pull this out of nowhere. There's a reason why. The reason why is because of your complex number here. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up. So I'm going to make each of these binomials equal to zero so I can actually solve. So we're going to take x equals i. I'm going to subtract i on each side. x minus i will equal zero. All right, so same thing for the next one. Let me actually rewrite my formula as I'm doing this. The first one is x minus i, and we're raising it to the first power. For the next one, x equals negative i. I'm going to add i to each side. So x plus i equals 0. All right, so in the parentheses, x plus i to the first power. For the next one, we'll have x equals negative 2i. And again, this is to the first power. And then the last one, x equals 2i. I'm going to subtract 2i on each side. Technically, on a test or quiz, guys, I'm not going to box it because I want to do something else. Technically, on a test or quiz, this would be perfectly fine in factored form. But the issue is there's one thing I haven't talked about too much yet. And that is, the directions here said, after you write it in its polynomial form, to actually factor it and write, or excuse me, rewrite it as a standard form equation. So if I was to write this ugly mess as a standard form equation, what would I need to do? Say it again. What would I need to do? How would I get all of this to be in standard form? We just have to multiply. We're not going to factor. It's already been factored. We're going to FOIL this. We're going to distribute. So since I have x plus i and x minus i in the first two, I'm going to multiply these two together because they pretty much look the exact same. And then x plus 2i and x minus 2i, I'm going to multiply these two together. So let's go ahead and distribute this. So we're going to make this y equals a. I still don't know what a is. x times x is x squared. I'm going to put that in parentheses. Desiree, what's x times i? Don't overthink it. Xi, you're right. Plus xi. Keep going. Negative i times x is what? You're good. Negative xi. And then the last one, negative i times i. What is that? Negative i squared. Perfect. Next one, we're going to do the same thing. I already know x times x is x squared. I take the easy one. You tell me, Desiree, what's x times negative 2i? It's okay. Just combine all. Just combine both of them. Negative 2xi. That's fine. Next one will be positive 2xi, right? And then what's the last one, Desiree? Negative 4i squared. Perfect. Lorraine, can I combine anything in both of these parentheses? Can I combine anything? What can I combine in the first parentheses? What happens to both of them? Okay, perfect. Go ahead, do the same thing for the next one. What happens? Become zero. These cancel. Go ahead. Let's think back to the uh, earlier part of Algebra 2 when we learned about quadratic functions, before we did quadratic functions. Um, when you have i squared, what is that equivalent to? I'm hearing 4, I'm hearing negative 1, I'm hearing i. i squared is equal to negative 1. So what do you think I'm going to have you guys do with those i squareds? Change them into negative 1. This is by definition. This is not something I'm pulling out of a hat. This is actually a, a actual thing we've talked about. So remember how I told you guys to memorize these? This is why it comes up again. So in that question that we just had, I'm going to replace the i squareds with a negative one guys look at the board to make sure you're plugging it in correctly because i already know somebody's not realizing this they're gonna have to change the sign so in this first one we're going to make it y equals a x squared plus one and then for the second one this is negative four times negative one so that's going to be x squared plus four y'all have a brain you made it to algebra two finish uh, distributing both of these finish using the foil method for the last two binomials
x squared times x squared is going to give me x to the fourth power. x squared times 4 is 4x squared. x squared times, whoops, uh, 1 times x squared is going to give me just x squared. And then 1 times 4 is just 4. Based on this, I know I can combine these two terms in the middle. So y is going to equal a, x to the fourth power plus 5x squared plus 4. If I asked you to write this in standard form, guys, this is how I would ask you to write it. Or, yeah, to write your answer. Especially for questions with imaginary complex conjugate type things, I would definitely probably ask you to write this in um, standard form. This is an a is an apple in case you can't tell. That is not a 9. That is an a. All right, when you're good and you're ready to move on, let's flip it over to the next page, and I'm going to do question one with you. So let's look at question one. All right, the great thing about question one is I've already included the steps at the top of the page. So you really don't need me, but I'll go through two of them with you, and then you guys are going to try one on your own. Okay, so for the very first question, it says at the top, Determine the end behavior and degree. Okay, so that stupid chart that I told you guys to remember, yeah, that's why I had you guys do that. So let me look back at my chart, so that way we can have it readily available. In this chart, Brooks, what's the leading coefficient here? For this equation, number one. One, positive or negative? Positive, so I'm going to put a plus sign on top of it. Okay, what's the degree for this polynomial? Add the exponents. Positive 3, good. Is 3 even or odd? Odd. Okay, so looking at that chart, did I lost my spot? There it is. We had a positive leading coefficient, an odd degree. What does that mean about your end behavior, Brooks? Where is it going to go? You said positive leading coefficient, right? And you said it was an odd degree? Down and up. There you go. We're going to go down first, then up. The first number, the, or the first thing you write is down. That goes to the left. The up part goes to the right. Okay, so that's step one. Step one's done. Step two says to list the real zeros and the multiplicity. Remember, look out for double roots. And step three says determine if it crosses or bounces. I'm going to combine these two steps. So if I was to try to find out your zeros for this, Omar, what would I need to do to this equation? If I wanted to find the zeros, what would I do? What will we do with that equation? No, don't distribute. You're going to work backwards. Equal zero. We need to make this entire equation equal zero. So we're going to set x squared equal to zero, and we're going to set the parentheses x minus three equal to zero. We need to solve to find the zeros. So I'm going to set x equal to zero. That's one of your answers. And I'm going to set x minus three equal zero. Okay, well, I'm going to add three to each side. So x is going to equal three. Really quick, Omar, what was the multiplicity for this x squared term? What's the multiplicity? 2. What does it mean when your multiplicity is 2? What does it do to your graph? Does it bounce or cross? Bounce. What about x equals 3? For this binomial, what was the multiplicity? 1. If you don't see it, put a 1. And what does that mean if it's a multiplicity of 1? What does it do? Crosses. Like what type of function? Cross is like a linear function. Perfect. So I've done steps two and three. Okay, so let me kind of graph what I have so far. I have zero, which is your x-intercept, and I also have x equals three. This isn't going to be a perfect graph, but it'll be close. I'm not expecting to put out three little hashes. Here's one x-intercept. Here's the other. Think back to just your basic knowledge of a graph. If your x-intercept is zero, what else does that mean? Oh, don't make me kick y'all back to algebra one. Where is this uh, zero? Where is it? It's at the origin. So where does it cross the y-axis? At zero. So what does that mean for your y-intercept then? Your y-intercept is zero. It won't always be this nice, guys. Bless you. It won't always be this nice where your y-intercept and x-intercept are already given. This one just so happened to end that way. All right, so let's actually graph this. So look up at the board first before you start graphing. So just look up at the board for just a second. The left side of the graph starts down. So I literally start my graph going down. At zero, 
Um, Omar, what did you say happens at zero? What does it do? It bounces off of the x-axis. So look at the board, guys. Draw that bouncing part first because that's where you guys usually mess up. Once you have that little sketch drawn, connect those two pieces. So it's going to start down and it should go up to the x-axis and bounce right off. Look back up. Um, I know it's going to end going up. Omar, what did we say? How is it going to cross at three? What type of function? Linear. Okay, so through three, I'm going to draw a line, kind of very similar to a linear function. And I'm just going to connect the pieces, guys. Connect it going this way. It's going to have to curve somehow. And then it's going to go up. This on your tests and quizzes, guys, I want to see something similar to this. Your graph might not look the same as the person next to you, but there are a few things I check for. Does it start down? Does it end up? And at each of the x-intercepts, does it bounce and does it cross? Those are the main things I check for. I'm going to do one more question with you guys, and then you're going to do the last question by yourself. That next question is number three on the next page. The steps that we just went through at the top, guys, I'm going to use again. Okay, for question three. Nicholas, I first need to find the leading coefficient in my degree. What's the leading coefficient for number three, Nicholas? And you said negative, right? Okay, so I'm going to put that negative symbol on top. What's the degree for this polynomial? It is four. You're going to take that one that's normally your multiplicity for that binomial, and you're going to add. So that's going to be four. Is four even or odd? Even. When that happens, look back at your chart. When you have a negative leading coefficient and an even degree, what happens to the ends of your graph, Nicholas? No, try it again. Negative? Even? Down, down. Both ends of the graph are going to go down. All right, step two and three, remember, I combined both of those. For step two, we're going to set the entire equation equal to zero. So we're going to have negative two, x plus two to the first power, x minus two cubed. And I'm going to take each of the binomials and set them equal to zero. So we're going to take x plus two, set that equal to zero. That's all raised to the first power. And we're going to have x minus two raised to the third power. Okay, so let me actually solve. x plus 2 equals 0. Andrea, what's the multiplicity for x equals negative 2 for the problem I just solved? 1, so I'm going to put multiplicity of 1. What does that mean for your graph, though? How is it going to cross? Like what type of function? There you go. For the next one, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to take x minus 2 and make it equal 0. Andrea, what's the multiplicity for this one? And how is it going to cross? What type of function is that? Cubic. Yep, cubed function. So let me write out what I have. I have negative 2 and I have positive two. Let me ask you this. Do either of those x-intercepts touch the y-axis as well? No, this is over here to the left. This one's over here to the right. So we need to think. The last step said to find your y-intercept. You guys tell me, how am I gonna find it? Say it again, Emma. Plug in or substitute zero for x. Plug in your 0 for x in the equation. So for question 3, this guy here, I'm going to replace uh, the x's here with 0. So I'm going to write that in this little corner. So we're going to have y equals negative 2 times 0 plus 2 to the first power, which I don't really need to write, 0 minus 2 to the third power. That is a 3. All right, so let's solve. y equals negative 2. Can I distribute? No, don't distribute. Use PEMDAS. So I'm going to add 2 plus 0 is 2 raised to the first power. 0 minus 2 is negative 2 to the third power. Chris, what's negative 2 to the third power? Try it again. Negative 8. And then 2 to the first power, you agree, that's just 2, right? Yeah, so it's 2 and then negative 8. So Chris, multiply it. What's negative 2 times 2 times negative 8? 
I'll give you a hint. It's positive. 32. What did you just find, Chris? Your y-intercept. So Ms. Tapia is not about to put out 32 little hash marks. That's unnecessary. So instead, I'm just going to go to the top of the graph. Oh, look, here's 32. That's what I'm graphing. So remember, you have x-intercepts here, and you have a y-intercept up here at 32. What you need to do is make sure that your graph, as you go from left to right, actually hits each of these points. So look up at the board for just a bit. Let me show you how to start this off so you don't mess it up on your tests and quizzes. At negative 2, look at your problem. What did it say it's going to cross as? Linear function. Okay, so let me start with the downward direction. Look at the board. It's going to start down, and it's going to cross like a linear function. All you need to do first is connect those two pieces. Go ahead and do that first. We're going to work this graph from left to right. So starting from the left, it's at negative 2. Where should it hit next? It needs to hit 32 first. You can't go to the next x-intercept and then go back up. That's not how these look. So I'm just going to keep going across. Here's the kind of creative part. Don't get too creative, though. You can go up past 32 and literally have the graph continue to go up before it comes back down, or you can do like Ms. Tapia and just turn it back around. The y-intercept doesn't have a multiplicity. It's just a y-intercept. You just want to make sure you hit it. At positive 2, let me look back. It said cubic. Show me with your arm, or show me with your finger, how does a cubic function look? It has that little curve that you have. So look at my paper first before you draw it on yours. It needs to curve up and then curve down because the end of your graph on the right has to continue going down. So graph that little curve part first so that way I don't take off points saying that you didn't do a cubic function. And then, of course, whenever you have that, just connect it with what you have. It's okay if your graph is a little sketchy, but it should have both ends of your graph going down, your y-intercept is plotted, and through each of the x-intercepts, I should see a line and a cubic function. That's exactly what I need to see. What I'm going to do now is question number four, completely. All I'm going to do at the end is post up what your answer should look like. I will tell you, on your tests and quizzes, guys, it would be very, very rare if I give you guys a binomial like this. I will not, not most of the time, give you a binomial like this. It'll actually be like 2x plus 1. Even though this is here, use it. So don't try to change it into a nice-looking binomial that I like. Just use it as x plus 1 and solve. Okay, so let's talk about what your graph should look like. So we should have our leading coefficient is a negative 2, which means our leading coefficient is negative. And the degree for this is a positive 3 plus 2, which is 5. So that means my degree is odd. Okay, well, if I look back at my notes for this, whenever I see that you have a leading coefficient that is negative and a degree that's odd, that means that your graph is going to open. Let me actually double check. Negative, odd, up, down. So down here, we're going to next set the equation equal to 0. And we're going to set each of the binomials equal to 0. The negative 2, guys, does not have a variable, so you do not need to set that equal to 0 as well. Of course, you should have solved. So x is going to equal negative 1 half. It has a multiplicity of 2, and it bounces off of the x-axis because of that 2. The other x-intercept is going to be negative 4. It has a multiplicity of 3, and it's going to cross specifically like a cubic function. I will say this, guys. If you're not writing out the bouncing and the cubic stuff, it's going to mess up your graph because you're not going to have something to refer back to. If I graph this out with what I have so far, I have negative 1 half, which is about here. Whoa, let me actually write negative 1 half. Negative 1 half, and the other one is negative 4. The issue is I don't have a y-intercept, so I need to find that y-intercept. You're going to take 0, plug it in for both of the x's, and you're going to solve. Your y-intercept, guys, should be negative 32. So I'm going to put down here negative 32. I know the direction of my graph opens up on the left and then down on the right. So starting on the left-hand side, guys, when I said you're going to sweep across the graph and uh, plot your points, I want you to keep in mind I'm starting from the left, and I'm just going to go across. And I want to see am I hitting every one of those points as I hit them as my hand went by. So for the x-intercepts and your y-intercept, we're going to start from the left. Okay, so it's going to start in an upward direction. 
At negative four, as this graph comes down, it needs to cross at a cubic function. So I'm gonna have this curve up and this curve down. That's the kind of curve I wanna see. So I'm gonna connect these two points. Okay, as I continue to go across, okay, I hit negative four, the next thing I need to hit is negative one half. You can't do like I did up here. The reason why I hit 32 is because I went from negative two to 32. That was the next point to hit. So we're gonna do that here. At negative one half, as I said, as I'm going across to hit one half, it should bounce off of the x-axis. So it's already below, I'm gonna have it bounce off of the x-axis. And as I continue, continue going to the left, or excuse me, to the right, it's gonna hit 32, which is the last point on your graph. And that last point, guys, needs to end in a downward direction. There are no other points on the far right-hand side of this graph, so that's it, that's all you have to do. These questions, guys, are super simple. Do not take shortcuts. Use the steps that I have given you with labeling all of the options, labeling your direction in your graph, what's happening, and the y-intercept. Make sure you show all of your work.